this lecture, we're going to introduce a slightly different type of growth model. Uh, before, what we had was a continuous growth model where a collector droplet is continually growing by the addition of uh, droplets as it moves through the cloud. In this particular model, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the droplet growth is a result of a uh, number of discrete uh, capture events. And so we're going to talk about that as being the stochastic model. And the reason we want to talk about it this way is because of this graph right here, where we have radius on this axis and time on this axis. If you look at growth by condensation, um, growth by condensation is initially very quick. Uh, it uh, causes the radius to increase very quickly, and then over time, it almost asymptotes out. And so it's good at growing cloud droplets initially, but it's very takes a long time in order to grow a cloud droplet all the way up to a drizzle drop size. If you remember, it takes an unrealistically long time to do that. But what we need is the collision coalescence mechanism to speed up the process. But the collision coalescence mechanism is, a, is extremely small, uh, extremely slow at the beginning. Uh, in part because the uh, collision and coalescence efficiency of small droplets is relatively small, but also the simple fact of the matter is that most of the droplets are about the same size uh, due to the growth by condensation. And the collision coalescence mechanism requires a large collector droplet relative to the population of droplets that it's going to be collecting. So you have this uh, disparate needs. Uh, the condensation grows things quickly, but creates a monomodal distribution. The collision coalescence needs a polydisperse uh, droplet size distribution, which it doesn't get. So if we review collision coalescence, it works best for a large spread in droplet radii. This would be the polydisperse situation. A large updraft velocity. Uh, we would need a high liquid water content and the large updraft velocity and the high liquid water content uh, are related to the depth of the cloud. Uh, in this case, deep clouds uh, will produce the largest rain droplets in the quickest amount of time. And the problem, of course, is, is that growth by condensation yields a nearly monomodal droplet size distribution, which raises the chicken or the egg question. How can we start the collision coalescence mechanism if all of our droplets are initially the same size? That's a problem. So what we do is we invoke the stochastic growth model in order to jumpstart the process. Uh, and there are two ways that we can jumpstart the collision coalescence process. Uh, the first is to invoke random turbulence. So that if you have turbulent motions inside the cloud, uh, you can envision a situation where you have two droplets that are exactly the same size, but come in contact with one another due to random, random turbulent motions inside the cloud. Uh, another theory as to how you can jumpstart the collision coalescence process is that there might, in fact, be a few giant cloud condensation nuclei in the atmosphere, at which point you have a droplet that starts off as a very large cloud droplet just from the fact that it's forming on a giant cloud condensation nuclei. Uh, these are very difficult to find. They're very difficult to quantify. And that's still an area of active research to identify to what extent giant nuclei, giant cloud condensation nuclei play a role in the jump-starting the collision coalescence process. But in the stochastic model, uh, we're assuming that there are random processes that are going on in the cloud that can cause a droplet to grow. Uh, so we'll start off in the stochastic model, which is basically following the idea of random turbulence. If you have a thousand droplets that are all exactly the same size, and through random turbulence, you have 10% of those that actually coll collide and coalesce with one another due to random turbulence in the cloud. At that point, you would have 100 droplets that have collided once, uh, and you have 900 droplets that have colli not collided at all. And then, you know, you have the same thing going on. Of these 900 that remain, 10% um, collide, and 10% of the 100 collide. So you end up with uh, 10 droplets that have collided, 100 uh, that have collided twice, 180 droplets that have collided once, and 810 droplets that haven't collided at all. And the third step of this process, you have 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% of 10 gives you one droplet that has undergone three collisions, 
27 droplets that have undergone two collisions, 243 droplets that have undergone one collision, and 729 droplets out of the original 1,000 have not gone, undergone any collision at all. So this is one mechanism by which, through random turbulence, you can actually get a single droplet that is larger than the population of droplets that are in the cloud and can jumpstart the collision coalescence process. Of course, the real problem with the stochastic model is we don't know what the likelihood is that these droplets will undergo a random turbulence event. So for this particular model, I just use 10%. 10% is probably way too high. And the likelihood of two droplets colliding due to random turbulence could, in fact, be much, much lower than that, which would mean that the formation of the initial collector droplet uh, would be that much more difficult. And so you can see that this type of stochastic model um, can be very difficult to solve. Uh, but it can also generate a collector droplet in an otherwise uniform field of cloud droplets and can jumpstart the collision coalescence process and get you moving towards uh, significant growth rate which can lead to uh, precipitation formation in relatively short order.